It's Jim Gordon here with Small Cap Power. We're at the uh, VRIC conference here in Vancouver in early January. I'm now joined by Matt Geiger. He is the managing partner for MJG Capital. Thanks for joining us, Matt. I appreciate it, Jim. Good to be here with you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start with uh, an overview of uh, MJG Capital. Okay, so we're an investment fund uh, focused exclusively on natural resources. Um, all investors are locked in for 10 years, so it's okay, very, yep. very ca patient capital. Um, at the moment, maybe 70 to 80 percent is junior resource focused, and then the rest of the portfolio is either in farmland, um, water, uh, forestry, aquaculture, and other resource plays that fit our mandate but aren't necessarily correlated to the global mining cycle. And just going back to the 10-year thing, I obviously, for lack of a better term, it does kind of weed out the people that have this fix for something really quick. I mean, you're saying we want patient investment. Oh, sure. And we're stating that right off the bat. Oh, obviously, yeah. it's very aggressive. Um, sure. And there's plenty of investors that I could have raised money from otherwise that aren't willing to lock up the money for 10 years. I get that, but I'm also yeah. a younger guy. I'm idealistic, and I want to get the right structure in place for the long term. No, I get And that, so yeah. by, by doing this, it makes it so that we can actually act as contrarians in the depths of bear markets. We don't have to worry about fund outflows. Uh, we don't have to worry about losing um, investors when times are tough. Yeah. And we can deploy capital and and then make money when, when the sector inevitably uh, flips towards yeah, better no, times. I, I like that. Well, hey, speaking of uh, t when times are tough, can you sure. talk about, and you, you touched on it there, about uh, your placement and how you move and navigate during very tough markets? Absolutely. Well, 2018 was a rough year, and I don't think many saw it coming in the industry. I was, in particular, was expecting a very strong 2018. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, we came off a brutal bear market that lasted between Q1 2011 through early 2016. 16 was a very strong year, 17 was a pretty strong year, and I thought 18 was going to be knocked out of the park for us junior mining investors yeah. and the companies in the space. We are in the later stages of an economic cycle, and that's generally when you see inflation pick up, generally when you see base metal demand pick up. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Um, I'm now of the impression that we're in a new uh, bear market that began in January 2018 and has uh -huh. persisted to today. I think this one will be shorter. It, it could end any month here. Um, but in order to take advantage of that, what we've been doing is focusing almost exclusively on private placements. Okay. So of the new positions that we've initiated since pretty much mid-2018, almost every single one of them, with the one exception of Adriatic Metals, has been through a private placement. So we're looking for very opportunistic deal terms, um, generally a three to five year full warrant, uh, no accelerator attached to the warrant. And uh, yeah, that, you know, we're, we're taking advantage of what are tough times um, by trying to get that extra leverage sure. through, through the warrants. And yeah, for investors in the space, I would encourage them um, to not buy common shares of companies that need to raise money anytime in the next 12 months. Um, it'd be better to just sit on their hands and wait for the deal itself. And then for investors that aren't able to or don't like doing private placements, uh, I would encourage um, them to only buy companies or only buy common shares of companies that have at least 12 months of runway before their next capital raise and hopefully much longer than that. We'll wrap things up with the, the few seconds we have left. Let's talk about it's early in 2019, but can you talk it a is. bit about what you're looking at and where you're going in this very young year? <laughs> I sure. can see a, a, a far uh, range of possibilities, to be honest. A very best case scenario, if we see a resolution on the Trump-China uh, tariff battle and we see a flat to weakening U.S. dollar, it could be a broad-based rally across the, the junior space, similar to 2016. It could be a very good year. Kind of more of the middle ground is we don't see a resolution to the Trump-China battle, yeah. we, but we do see the U.S. dollar either moderate or even weaken, in which case it should be a very strong year for precious metals, uh, but base metals and industrial metals could suffer because of worries about global GDP demand. And then in a very worst case scenario, we could see a repeat of 2018, where we see the U.S. dollar continue to strengthen, um, and we don't see a resolution to the, to the trade battle in which case it, it, times could be rough. So I, I think it really will come down to the U.S. dollar or, and mainly how Fed policy affects the U.S. dollar and whether there's a resolution to the trade battle. And I wanted to add one more thing. Sure, certainly. It's, it's frustrating because for, normally for, for a currency um, of a given country, if you have the country in a government shutdown that's gone on longer than any other government shutdown, yeah, very if, much you so, have yeah. a, if you have a country that has their uh, uh, debt-to-GDP ratio going over 100% for the first time, and you have a country where the leader, um, regardless of where you sit on the political uh, spectrum, is potentially in danger of being removed from office. Mm -hmm. All of those are very negative for the country's currency. So for any other currency in the world, it would be plunging given yeah. the situation that the uh, United States is in. But the United States is a, is a different animal because it is that, that global reserve currency. So it's, it's interesting to see it continue to show strength, even with all these, these headwinds that yeah. we're witnessing what, now. Well, so well said. It's going to be a very interesting 2019, <laughs> I can say that for sure. And if you uh, 
like what you're hearing here, or you're, you're curious, you want to know more, of course you can go to mjgcapital.com. Matt, is there, you guys put a newsletter out to, too, within your website and everything, do you not? I do, I do. Yeah. Um, we put out a semi-annual letter twice a year, and it's pretty thorough, it's generally 40 to 50 pages, um, brief overview on what I see in the sector. I always put in a new featured investment to highlight one of our holdings in our portfolio, and then updates on the past featured investments that we still own. It's, uh, Matt Geiger, who is the managing partner of MJG Capital, again, mjgcapital.com. Thank you for your time and yep. your honesty. Thanks for having me. You bet. Cheers.